Welcome back, back with another banger. It's the React Files. Hope you're having a good night. Let's get straight to it. Kim Kardashian gets branded weird after posing for a late night photo shoot with Elon Musk's $30,000 Tesla bot. The 44-year-old posed topless under a black puffer jacket, sitting on the robot's lap inside her custom Tesla Model S. She wore nude tone tights with printed garter belts, creating the illusion of no underwear. Fans criticized the shoot as embarrassing and disturbing, with some expressing discomfort over the sexualization of the robot. One controversial Instagram shot showed the robot appearing to touch her thigh. Earlier this week, Kim shared a video of an unsettling interaction with the bot, sparking curiosity about whether it was a loan or gift. Hi. Can you do this? I love you. <gasps> you know how to do that? Okay. What should we do? Go running. Let's go for a run. Do you know how to do... Oh, you are Hawaiian. Can you go like this, like blow a kiss? Yeah. Mm. Hand to the face. Ah. Like, yeah! Okay. You're so cute. How tall are you? Oh, running again. Yeah. <laughs> you love to run. Oh, you're that tall. Yeah. I think you are... Oh, yeah, sure. You stay fit by running. <laughs> that running move gets me every time. Yeah. Um... Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, raise the roof. Yep. Hey. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, you're a little slow, but I beat you. Okay. I guess our robot wasn't just a movie. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty cool to watch. The only scary part is how fast it'll be when they start making upgrades and newer versions start coming up. Like next gen, next gen Tesla robots, that's crazy. The timing of this is actually wild. So Kim Kardashian just posted this picture of her and Michelle Lamy, and they looked nice and snuggly. So I wanted to look into their relationship. And these two actually met back in 2013, and they have a lot of photo shoots together. So this is one from 2020, and it looks like they exchange outfits, and there's a lot of these mysterious blurry pictures. And this one in particular is interesting. I can't tell if it's both of them in the picture or just one person, but this is a more recent photo shoot and they're in a bathtub together and they're also on a bed together. Now, of course, these photo shoots all have their deep meanings and you can look up exactly what they mean on their official websites. But I mean, Michelle Lamy even designed Kim's office. So these two are very, very close friends and they even have FaceTimes and lives that you can see online. Like, check this out. How are you? I'm great. I'm great, Kim. And I'm in bed because it's late and all those nights we're partying and everything, so tonight, I'm in my skills, in bed. <laughs> so I'm looking at this weather map of what this bomb cyclone's about to do, and I just have a weird feeling something's not right. So I looked into it. So like, for example, like this is the most current drought map that we have. And as you can see, there's a lot of abnormally dry areas, particularly in California and Nevada, and some moderate drought. Well, it just so happens in those areas, that's where they're mining for the white gold. And you gotta have water to mine for that white gold. Then I noticed this company had a lot going on in between Oregon and Nevada. And this so happens to be on native land. And you know a certain group of people are not happy about it. Now what's crazy about this storm is not only is there gonna be a ton of water coming, it looks like it's gonna mess up Oregon and California pretty bad. And there's already been some bipartisan infrastructure laws put in place looking for the goodies in Oregon. I mean, hey, call it a coincidence. What do I know? But it sure would make a lot of sense. I've heard of a bomb cyclone. Last I heard, they were in the Northeast. This is on the West Coast. This is my first time hearing about something like this. Some people say it happens all the time. I don't know what to think of this one. Either way, make sure you stay safe. NPCs are real, and you are one. What does this have to do with Ouija board dousing rods? Buckle up, because we're about to talk about it. But 
before we do that, first and foremost, you need to understand that your body, your mind, it functions like a computer because it is a computer. But in today's episode, we're going to talk about the ideometer phenomenon. You were like me, you were terrified of Ouija boards. Listen, I'm not trying to summon any demons. I don't want to get possessed. But the way that they actually work might be more terrifying depending on how you look at it. You rely on something called the ideometer phenomenon. What is that? Oh, it's basically just when your subconscious mind makes things happen that your conscious mind is completely unaware of. Dowsing rods is the same. Table tipping used to be extremely popular. It's all just your subconscious mind making something happen without your conscious mind realizing it. You experience this all the time. Think about when you have a busy day. There's a lot on your mind. You're driving home. You are not focused whatsoever on that drive. You're working out the mental problems. You're distracted. And next thing you know, you're in your driveway. You were completely on autopilot. You are on autopilot, you are an NPC. There was an incredible paper published called Conscious Thought Does Not Guide Moment-to-Moment -moment Actions. It serves social and cultural functions. Number one, it talks about how unconscious thoughts drive the vast majority of actions. You only become aware of a decision that was made after an action occurs. That conscious thought lags after the actions. And your brain attaches logical reasons to why you acted a certain way. But all of that is after the subconscious decides to act and the action is performed. Now you can see the limitations of conscious thought because a lot of times people can't adequately explain why they chose to do something. We're trying to come up with reasons why. This is because much of behavior is automatic and it's triggered by social cues, environmental cues, things that are going on, things that your computer is picking up on and then acting on without your conscious mind even knowing. So what is the role of conscious thought? Number one, it simulates scenarios, simulates like a computer. Think of things like daydreaming. It also processes past and future events. This is a huge one. It adapts your behavior to cultural and social expectations. And it is run on fear. Because that's the baseline programming. You were born into it. That's okay. Going back to the beginning, your subconscious mind is in charge of so much. It literally impacts your daily life and you don't even realize it. Your conscious mind is just trying to rationally attach meaning to all these crazy things that are happening. And you cannot change it unless you recognize it in yourself. You are born into programming. You are constantly being programmed. And if you operate on autopilot, you are unaware. Awareness is the key. You have to make a conscious decision to be in every moment. Pretty interesting that Buddha says our path to peace and enlightenment lies within us in the present moment. Dang, that was deep. Shout out to Mr. Coke Daddy. I'm not gonna lie. I've had that drive home where I'm just on autopilot for sure. Yes, I must say, I myself even is guilty of being an NPC. Don't forget to follow me for your dose of nightmare fuel. Here's four of them coming together. Yeah. Um, and out of the vortices, we've uh, attached now arms. Mm -hmm. But the four of these will now come together and lift this 50 pound barrel. Yeah. And then five of them will come together and pick up the five collected barrels mm. because of their collected thrust. Right. This is a whole new form of flight. An uh, entirely new form of flight, tangential yeah. flight. Yeah. The ability to fly around your own center of mass, mm -hmm. something they've never been able to accomplish with yeah. just six props. But this was low hanging fruit mm -hmm. from the linchpin. I wasn't trying to build flight vehicles. I mm -hmm. was just trying to prove, I was like, if this is the fracto, I said, we should be able to put props in those pentagonal areas and it should have tangential flight. Right. And the, the drone community hated me. They were like, how dare you hit us with something like this? And even though I made a gift for $25,000 or a reward for anybody that was able to build the flight simulator yeah. with this, um, they were like, there were people that were saying, you can't, it's not possible to accomplish that. And within two weeks, Boom. we had, we had it done. Yeah. 
by putting it out into the universe. And now these five, so this is the end of cranes, mm -hmm. or this will be able to greatly assist yeah. in how yeah. we do construction and lifting and bringing things home. And yeah. they're all they're, they're all autonomous. Yeah, I'm sure that's all it took was two weeks for someone to claim that 25 Gs. Shout out to Terrence Howard and Billy Carson. It just looks like something from the Marvel MCU, for real. Like S.H.I.E.L.D. I could really see this being done. AI! Yeah, it's all fun and games, right? <laughs> Super innocent. Yeah. Until it's what nightmares are made out of, you knuckle-headed nitwit moron! Look at this. For real. Artificial intelligence came up with this? <laughs> yeah, okay. More like a demon came up with it. And then look at this cat. It's a giant cat that's going to lean down. It's about to eat. Oh, Area 51. And we got these little aquatic gloopy globs in Area 51. Oh, now we got sleep paralysis demons terrifying you in the later hours of the night. Nephilim look like clown looking A dudes. Huh? And you think artificial intelligence came up with this? Huh? You think this demon angel walking away from a church came from artificial intelligence? You think this crater-faced, baby-faced, cancer cell-looking dude came from artificial intelligence? You think this demonic DMT-looking ayahuasca nightmare-looking dude came from artificial intelligence? Oh, yeah, you think they all... Oh, you think a computer made this? Oh, okay, yeah. How about a demonic nightmarish demon that wants to portray your inner fears. You type in a couple keywords, it's going to give you this freaking thing, <laughs> this super detailed thing, a couple keywords. Oh yeah, you're a couple keywords and some ones and zeros, a little algorithm. I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. I agree. Shout out to Seven Club. Those are hard to watch. They look totally realistic, for sure. Lucifer with the 100 gifted. I ref rebuke. Hey! Hey! Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Ch oh, hell no. Oh, hell no! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. I don't want your subs, gang. Serious, bro. How can I refund him? The devil's a lie. It's a lie. What do you think of that recording? It's quite evident what happens there. You can notice how the arm of that sculpture moves totally along. But, a very important fact that Fernando gives us, is that that sculpture is not articulated, and is totally made of plaster. It is basically impossible for that statue to move its arm in that way. So what's your thoughts? It's without a doubt a very interesting video. Thanks for watching. We just had confirmation that Ukraine has actually now fired these American-made attack and ballistic missiles into Russia. President Biden, of course, lifting restrictions on where the weapons can be used. But as you say this morning, Vladimir Putin appearing to threaten to use nuclear weapons if these were used. But Ukraine seeming to call his bluff, firing six missiles into an ammunition storage warehouse in the Bryansk region of Russia. Russia claiming that it intercepted five of these missiles. You know, Putin's made nuclear threats before they're proved to be hollow. But I think the situation remains highly volatile. President-elect Trump, of course, promising to end the war when he takes office. But I think these developments are going to make that all the harder. Meanwhile, Ukraine marking a grim milestone today, 1,000 days of Russia's devastating war with daily attacks across the country just going on and on. Today, the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv is warning Americans to stay close to shelters, warning about a specific air threat from Russia Mayor Klitschko, what should the people of the Ukrainian capital know about this threat? Um, uh, yes, of course, uh, right now it's already 1,000 days we uh, defend our homeland uh, and 1,000 uh, days we're living under uh, this condition uh, where every minute, every uh, second uh, Russian missiles and kamikaze drone attack our hometown and that's why we have to be uh, protected and that's why the safety main priority for everyone in Ukraine and uh, right now one more attack and uh, yeah, it's, uh, we have to be strong and defend our hometown. Thank you for everyone who supports Ukraine. 
More than a thousand days into this war, Russia continues to attack the Ukrainian capital and other major population centers with both missiles and drones. The threat of nuclear war is greater now than at any point in the history of the Ukrainian conflict. Why? Well, overnight, Vladimir Putin signed Russia's new nuclear doctrine, which allows the Kremlin to consider using nuclear weapons in response to any conventional missile attack inside Russian territory, one that is backed up by a nuclear power like the US. Precisely the kind of attack Ukraine has just carried out after the US and President Biden gave it the all clear to use US-made Atakams missiles and five was shot down around 110 kilometres inside Russian territory overnight with a sixth falling on a munitions plant and causing a fire. The question now in Britain is whether it will follow the US's lead and allow the British-made Storm Shadow missiles to be fired at Russia as well. An escalation that would certainly risk retaliation or, as a member of Russia's Security Council put it, World War Three. For more, follow us here and watch tonight at six o'clock. Yo, shout out to Ben Downey, Seven News Australia. That's crazy to even hear the U.S. being talked about on a foreign news network, even mentioning the words World War Three. That's crazy. What a time to be alive, right? Shout out to Australia. So President Biden is trying to start World War III as we speak before he leaves office, it seems, or at least the deep state puppets are actively trying to do this behind the scenes. Congress is now calling for impeachment under the 25th Amendment, hearing from a number of representatives uh, calling for this right now. And Europe is bracing for nuclear war this afternoon. And here was a front page of the New York Post. Ukraine reportedly using long range missiles, first time to blow up Russian weapons facility as Putin issues a nuke warning to America. And it was almost immediate, like right after President Biden gave the green light to do this, Zelensky and NATO with the coordination of NATO. Make no mistake, this is not just Ukraine doing this. This is NATO coordination and this attack. Well, I have drafted articles of impeachment. Uh, I've sent them to the lead shop. We have uh, we have language back. But what I'm asking for before I drop that, these articles is I'm asking for a briefing because we don't know what the president authorized. We don't know if he put any parameters on it. We don't know if he put any exceptions on it. So that's what I've asked for. And they and I have energized them with these draft impeachment articles. We have outsourced our military decisions to Ukraine. They're not a, an ally. Yes, we have the agreement from 2014, but this could be an impeachable offense, depending on what he said, what he authorized and what Ukraine is doing. Well, they have a whole lot more than six. President Biden is the only man that has the football next to him. And you have minutes to decide if Russia decides to launch an attack, not hours, minutes to decide if you're going to respond. This is very concerning to me. We are hearing unconfirmed reports that both the UK and France are going to authorize uh, their shadow, their storm shadow missiles to be used by Ukraine. If Europe is leading us into World War III, we don't want to outsource that decision. We want to keep it to ourselves, which is why we must know what the president agreed to. This would mean Kamala Harris, president of the United States. How does that sit with you? Oh, it doesn't sit well at all. We do not want Kamala Harris, but I want the, the administration to admit what they did. And I want the House to take action. Yeah, things are getting kind of dark just to hear the term. Yeah, he's sitting next to the football. You got minutes to decide, not hours. Yo. We don't know what he authorized. Yo, it's crazy right now. I'm just hoping things could cool down just for a few more months. Just chill. Things have escalated in that territory, okay? It is just a, a simple fact that now Russia is saying that they are completely re-examining their nuclear doctrine. They are willing to go nuclear because of what they have just discovered. Ukraine fired six American-supplied longer-range missiles at Russia's Bryansk region, okay? That is a fact. It happened. That is our weaponry that was given to Ukraine to attack Russia. I told you from the beginning we are fighting a proxy war in Russia. This is proof of that. Our missiles have now been sent there, so they can now say we have been attacked by the USA. That decision has been made by the Biden administration. And so what are they going to tell you? Putin's crazy for responding to that. Now speaking about nuclear, going nuclear, talking about nuclear weapons. He's saying, yes, I have now lowered. We have formally lowered the threshold for using nuclear weapons. They are now back on the table. 
we are we are inching very close to World War Three. And I, I think it's all related. I think what's happening in Ukraine is related to what's happening in I do not think any of this is by coincidence. OK, we have a lot of hot regions right now. And the way that the Western media continually lies about everything and is using the same smearing tactics for those of us who have been trying to get out and tell you the truth. OK, wake up, examine these issues and recognize that you will be the ones that suffer for your stupidity. That is the reality. We suffer when we remain ignorant. All of us, we suffer when we remain ignorant. So go listen to the perspectives of people like Tucker and the independent media who has been telling you the truth about every issue. Even when Trump did the lockdowns, I was against it. As a supporter of Trump, that was controversial. I said, this is the wrong decision. You don't lock down people, okay? I am pro-freedom always. Doesn't matter who it is that's in office and is making the decision. We have to make sure that we have morals that do not shake because of alliances. OK, we, we, it, we have to be America first, pro freedom, always. Man, shout out to Candace Owens talking on a hot topic for real. But she makes all the sense in the world. It's true. It's a scary thought so soon, you know, like I said, man, everyone just needs to chill. How could you nominate someone with allegations of across the, or trafficking across state lines. Matt Gates has long denied all allegations, calling the claims, quote, invented, and saying in a statement to ABC News that this false smear following a three-year criminal investigation should be viewed with great skepticism. That DOJ investigation was closed with no charges being brought. We'll be right back. You are an inherited collection of beliefs, traumas, actions, and programming. And all of these social adaptations happen to you unconsciously and you did it to yourself for your own survival. You wanna know how a Ouija board works? It's really scary. It's called the ideometer phenomenon. It's where your subconscious mind will make things happen without your conscious mind realizing it. Most of your actions happen in the subconscious without your conscious mind realizing it. You operate on autopilot and your subconscious is your baseline operation. Every living thing is born into programming and their prime objective of that programming is to survive. Fear is one of the most powerful tools to make this happen. Fear activates your amygdala and it bypasses your frontal lobe where logical decision making happens. Fear literally hijacks your brain. Now we need to address something from a video that I posted a couple of days ago. Because they knew their resources were low, they would be less able to fight back. They were attacking soldiers, right? No, they weren't. The elderly, women, and children in the back as they were fleeing to safety. Pregnant women, non-combatants, it doesn't matter. Custer claimed this was a great, oh wait, sorry. Custer claimed this was a great victory. So from that clip, people were making a ton of assumptions. And this is where I need to be more responsible as a person who has a platform and is trying to convey my own opinion. This document details how conscious thought does not guide moment to moment actions. It highlights that most of the decision making is automatic and signaled by environmental and cultural stimuli. The role of conscious thought is to simulate experiences, process past and future events, and adapt behavior to cultural and societal expectation. You are born into fear-based programming. It literally hijacks your brain. People will join a mob and conform out of fear. Fear is an extremely powerful motivator that will make you do things that you otherwise wouldn't. And if you feel your existence is threatened, fear takes over. Let's talk about what it means when I post a picture like this. Number one, every single Jewish person and Palestinian on this earth has a right to exist and has a right to be alive. Every single life on this earth has a right to existence. Being anti-violence doesn't mean that you are pro-Hamas. Also doesn't mean that you are anti-Jew or anti-Semitic. This is not binary. You will notice, depending on what side you support, if you say you are pro-Palestine, people will say you are pro-Hamas. It is not one and the same. Same thing happens to anybody that says they are pro-Israel. They are immediately labeled as I see people that post anti-Semitic things, but seeing something like this fills you with a hatred for the Jews. You have the same disease. Hate is hate. It doesn't matter what made you hate. There are parties from both sides of this conflict going on that have received so much propaganda and conditioning from an early age to hate the other side. They are doing what their programming tells them to do. But if you have anti-Semitic thoughts, guys, you have the same disease. The Jews deserve to be safe in every single land that they exist in. Everyone deserves that. 
And as much as both sides want to distill this down to Jews versus Muslims, it is not that. It is the weakest of the species making decisions that impact the masses. It is men and women who are infected with spiritual cancer, who think their needs bypass someone else's, who thinks their ambitions mean that they can take a life whose literal conditioning and programming blind themselves to the facts that they are monsters. That is what happened to the Native Americans, the evil people that participated in their genocide. But if you distill these concepts into broad generalization, saying things like all whites killed the Native Americans, all Jews are bad, all Palestinians are terrorists, you're just subject to the same freaking programming that everybody else is. You're infected with the same disease. When you wake up, you realize that history is impacted by evil individuals. The masses comply out of fear for their survival. This is why you need to remove fear. It doesn't serve you and it cannot coexist with love. Give yourself like Iron Man. You can either be powered by fear, which hijacks your brain, or you can be powered by love. It allows you to use all of your faculties. Shout outs to Mr. Cold Daddy. Shout outs to him taking accountability for what he said and adjusting his approach to really show what he was really trying to say. And I agree. Hate is a bad disease for real. Got to fill our hearts with love. No fear. Absolutely. That was a good Iron Man analogy for real. A streamer just went up to Michelle Lamy and tried to get her to say the words God is good and she wouldn't say it. This is absolutely wild. Check this clip out. God is good. God is so good. You don't believe in God? Oh, okay. Can I get a God? Can I get a God is good? Hey man, I need to stop it. What? Nah, I want to pay. Nigga, what's wrong with God is good? I'm asking that question. Get mad about that? I can spread the word. Taking blocks out of the quarry, floating them down the Nile with logs, using elephants to pull them out and drag them across the desert into the location, and then from there, utilizing water chambers to float the blocks into place. Come on, man. And I see people posting that theory for years and years. They keep posting that theory, posting the video of the water and the blocks floating around and just magically sliding into place. We have one big problem with not only the mud ramp theory, but even with this floating block theory we have a major problem and the major problem is this every stone in the great all two million blocks is 100 percent unique this is the celtic god asus there is something that's been hidden from us for 2000 years and i'm going to expose it to you all today is jesus just made up for some terrible nefarious reason have they been using this story to control us the entire time i'm melting minds today watch at your own risk this goes all the way back to the restarting of civilization itself. There was a worldwide cataclysm. Civilization restarted in Sumer. I do not care about the geopolitical claims of the Indus Valley. And right away, right from the beginning, Tammuz was born on December 25th. Who was Tammuz? Now look, I've been telling this story wrong for about th however long I've been doing this now. I have said that Nimrod was born as the reincarnation of Kush. That was inaccurate. Kush was Nimrod's father, but Samirimus was Nimrod's wife. Nimrod died according to the book of Jubilees, not saying this is true, but according to the book of Jubilees, Esau, Jacob, who later became Israel, his brother Esau, killed King Nimrod, and he was supposed to be a god. Ha! Huh, I thought he was going to live forever. Have no fear. Tammuz was born as the reincarnation of Nimrod. And now I have corrected myself, and that part of the story is straight. Nimrod died. Tammuz was born as the reincarnation of Nimrod. He was the son of Semiramis, the Babylonian queen of heaven. Is she mentioned in the Bible? Yes, Ashtoreth, the queen of heaven. Known in Egyptian mythology as Isis, who reincarnated Osiris. And this is where we get our Easter bunny egg mythology, pagan rituals. Tammuz was born on December 25th, the winter solstice. That time of year where the sun stops losing ground, stops dying, and the days start getting longer is the significance there we're going to remember. The sun starts to gain its strength on the winter solstice. Tammuz was worshipped as the reincarnation of the sun god Nimrod. The sun god, which is why the winter solstice is so important. The pagan festival in honor of Tammuz's birth was celebrated on December 25th with feasting, gift giving, and merrymaking. The Romans celebrated the festival of Saturnalia between the 17th and 25th of December, the winter solstice. They paid tribute to Saturn, the god of agriculture and harvest. 
There were sacrifices, banquets, gift giving, and partying, merrymaking. A feast is made for laughter. Why did they honor the god Saturn on December 25th? It coincided with the celebration of the birth of the unconquered sun, Sol Invictus, who the Roman Emperor Constantine worshipped the entire time. Honoring Saturn, the god of agriculture, because winter didn't kill us all. Get it? They worshipped the sun and the planets, the wandering stars. That's what the word planet means, wanderer. I've told you all about that. Why do the Christians, why did Rome choose December 25th to honor the birth of Jesus? Was it to assimilate the pagans into the Christian religion? Or was it because Constantine worshiped Sol Invictus? This video ain't going anywhere near where you think it is, even with all this, I can't wait. While some say all the gods were born on December 25th, birthday of Hermes is not known. Birthday of Buddha is usually in April or May. Krishna was born in July 18th. Birthday of Horus is not known, though the cults of Horus adopted December 25th after Christianity became popular. Heracles is October 31st, Adonis is October 11th, Dionysus is not known. Zarathustra is March 26th, the birthday of Mithra is not known. That's another one of those cults adopted it after Christianity was popularized. Birthday of Tammuz is on December 25th. The Bible does not say Jesus was born on December 25th. Though the wise men did follow his star, to find him at home after they had gotten back, they brought him gifts and praised him as Lord. And there is certainly an astronomical happening that can be traced, his star. They saw his star and followed his star, the king star. Asus was stabbed and hung from a tree. Odin was stabbed and hung from a tree. Jesus was stabbed and hung on a cross, which was made from a tree. But the Romans invented crucifixion. There is no evidence from Celtic mythology that Asus died on a cross. Asus was not born on December 25th. His mother's name was Dawn. There's the sun deity again. Who wrote this? Asus Krios was a healing savior? This is simply not true. The cross was one of the Druids' components of their worship. A tree in a cross shape with lops branches around shape cross represents the sun deity Gud. The Celts began using crosses, specifically the, that Celtic cross during the early Middle Ages after they converted to Christianity. There is no recorded Celtic mythology stating that God Asus was born of a virgin. Oh snap, this is Neo-Druidism from the 18th century AD. This fella, a Druidic revivalist, identified Asus with Jesus on the strength of the similarity of their names. And just like the cult of Mithra and the cult of Horus, Neo-Druids, after the Celts adopted Christianity, associated an ancient druid god with Jesus. But I'm here to tell you this dude was not entirely wrong about the druids. There is a reason that Asus is, sounds like Jesus and that he was stabbed in the side and hung from the tree, like Odin and also Jesus. The druids did believe in reincarnation and that souls were immortal and went through different stages. Their ideas of reincarnation were very similar to the Hindus. Druid funerals focused on the idea that the soul is experiencing a new birth of some sort. What does Celtic mythology have to do with Iranian Zoroastrianism? Everything have to do with Indus Valley Hinduism? Everything. Modern academia will tell you, no, Asus and Jesus are not the same name. They'll say Asus comes from Proto-Indo-European roots. But I'm here to inform you that Indo-European is made up. Not one scrap of evidence theorized, postulated, reverse engineered, in total ignorance, or at least denial, gross denial of the facts and the data. You see, Hinduism was carried into the Indus Valley around 1300 to 1100 BC. That's right, the Aryans wrote the Vedas. Zoroastrianism? How did Iran get that? Where'd they get that from? In 1400 BC. Where'd the Celts get Druidism from? Here's a better question. Who are the Celts? Who exactly were the Twate Danan? the tribe of Dan. Literally means the tribe of Dan. The Celts are the tribe of Dan. The tribe of Dan revived the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, conquered the Aryans, carried Zoroastrianism into the Indus Valley. The Celts are the tribe of Dan. Stabbed in the side and hung from a tree, where'd they get this story from? Indo-European language family is made up. The Celts were Phoenicians. They came from the Levant. Odin was stabbed in the side and hung from a tree. The Germanic tribes are Phoenician. They came from the Levant. 
the Phoenician origin of Britons, Scots, and Anglo-Saxons discovered by Phoenician and Sumerian inscriptions in Britain by pre-Roman Britain coins. I'm not talking about British Israelism anything. That dude was onto something real that has now been confirmed. The Britons were Phoenicians before the Anglo-Saxons even got there. Let me turn my autistic passion dial down a little bit. This is a heated debate. You can only hear my side of it in this video, but I hear all the arguments. But I'm not making this up. There's only evidence of what I'm telling you. The Germanic tribes are Phoenician from the Levant. That includes the Norse. There's a reason Odin in the Norse, Woden in the Anglo-Saxon is the same god. Where does North mythology come from? Anglo-Saxon mythology. The Germanic languages are Hebrew, mixed with other tongues. The Germanic alphabets are Hebrew. The English alphabet is Hebrew. Ah, came from the Phoenicians. That's what I just said. The Phoenicians were writing in cuneiform before the Hebrews came in and conquered the land of Canaan. And the alphabet magically switched. Anyway, it's Hebrew. It's the Hebrew alphabet. Phoenicia is a word the Romans made up when they revived the region politically. Where did the world get this religion from? 1400 BC, the tribe of Dan receives their lot the coast of their inheritance on the coast of the Mediterranean. They went up from there and conquered Laish, an unfortified town on the Silk Road to China. On their way to do that, they formed a new religion. It went into Micah's house of gods. They took the graven image, Semiramis and Tammuz, and the ephod and the teraphim, the earth angels, and the molted image, the bull, and the Levite priest, the Torah and wrapped up all the religions of the world into one. Zoroastrianism, Druidism, Hinduism. They had the Levite priest. This whole story is prophesied all throughout the Old Testament, stabbing the side and hung from the tree. Look, this is Psalm 22. And King David is absolutely confirmed by Tal Dan. That's what Laish is called to this day. The city of Dan, where they worshiped the golden bull. Constantine worshiped Sol Invictus. They all worshiped the sun. Psalm 19 says the sun represents God and tells the gospel in a universal language every single day. Represents God telling the gospel. Jesus is the God who created the sun manifest in the flesh. All this December 25th business is about him to begin with. And all these ancient mythologies are from the Levant and prophesy of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who even academia agrees was no myth but a man, which the prophets of God prophesied his coming from the beginning. And the tribe of Dan spread those prophecies all over the world in that new religion, paganism. It's crazy how we ended with paganism. Shout out to Dead Hidden, dropping these pearls of wisdom the size of boulders. Lots to think about, lots to research. It definitely opens up the conversation. We have a major carrot recall after E. coli unalives one person and sickens 39 others. Major chains like Walmart, Target, Trader Joe's. This is not good. So Grimway Farms recalled its organic whole and organic baby peeled carrots on Saturday because the vegetable may have been contaminated with E. coli. But guys, these things are sold everywhere. Now these carrots are sold under many brands, including all of these from Kroger to Target to Publix, Trader Joe's, Walmart, Whole Foods. And these are the products and sizes. Do you want a screenshot? And more products and sizes if you'd like to screenshot. Whole carrots that were affected were available to purchase from August 14th to October 23rd, with best if used by dates between September 11th to November 12th. I mean, these carrots are everywhere, people, from Puerto Rico to Canada to the US. 
the usual symptoms of E. coli is going to be dehydration, bloody diarrhea, abdominal cramps, fever, but some cases can lead to life-threatening gastrointestinal illnesses. I mean, guys, when I tell you this is bad, it's affected 18 states already. Between Listeria and E. coli, I don't know what's next. Shout out to Joe Anybody. I didn't know it was that deep. That's a lot of carrots. And everybody eats carrots for the most part. Make sure you check that list, check your packaging, check the dates, be safe. I agree between this and Listeria, man. I don't know what to think. Be careful, bro. Hey, be careful, be careful. Are you still in here, Randy? And that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed tonight's rabbit hole. If you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Just to make sure the algorithm know what's up. So what are we gonna do, y'all? That's right, run these numbers up. Thanks again, till next time.